Hi, I'm Hannah and in this short video I'm going to be giving you a brief look at Marmoset Toolbag 4's brand new interface and workspace layout. Workspaces are a new concept to Toolbag 4 and are designed to let you customise and adapt your workspace in order to maximise your workflow. After installation, Toolbag will launch into the setup workspace by default. This mode has the viewport area split up into four individual viewports. As you can see, these show four different camera views, the top, the front, the right, and through the main camera in the scene. You can switch between which cameras are being used via the drop-down menu on the left of each viewport. The setup workspace gives you freedom to rearrange elements of the scene without having to alter the positioning of your render camera. Workspaces can be navigated around via the row of tabs at the top left of the UI. By default, there's a workspace for each area of functionality within Toolbag, texturing, rendering, and animation. One of the key goals of Toolbag's new interface was to give artists as much flexibility as possible. Although the five existing workspace types are there to get you started, you can easily create your own via the plus icon. This will create a new tab for your custom workspace. UI panels can be added to the workspaces via the window menu. Once open, simply drag the window to your chosen location to dock it. This is great for making sure your most commonly used components are accessible at all times. If you want to change up the layout, you can pop panels out of their docked mode with this icon in the top right. All panels will have this undocking icon in the same location and having some windows floating can be incredibly useful when using a multiple monitor setup. If you're an existing Toolbag user, you can use the classic workspace if you fancy some familiarity. By default, this is the same as Toolbag 2 and 3's workspaces, though it can still be customised like any other workspace. If you need to reset your workspace, either the current one or all of them, navigate to Window and then Workspace in order to set the layouts back to default. The texture workspace is more complex than the other workspaces due to how many features and tools have been added for texture creation. While we do have another video which serves as an introduction to texturing in Toolbag 4, I'll quickly highlight some of the key UI elements to get you started. Clicking on the texture project itself, the settings underneath the scene hierarchy will display several texture specific menu elements such as project settings, input maps, project maps, and export settings. Docked with the materials tab is the layers panel and this forms the basis of your texture projects. Paired with this, and you may have to expand it out, is the layer settings. As you work, this will populate with settings relating to whatever layer or mask that you currently have selected. The layer settings is also used to apply materials or colours to the paintbrush tool. Or for setting colour values in the gradient tool. By default, the texture workspace will have what is usually the main viewport area split up into two segments. The right side is the canvas, which is used for viewing your textures and input map superimposed over your UV shells. You can also change any other viewports to a canvas by navigating to the viewport mode drop down menu and selecting canvas. The render mode drop down is a little different in canvas mode in that it allows you to switch between viewing isolated maps rather than quality and render passes. You can zoom in and out of the canvas using alt and right click and you can pan around it with Alt and middle mouse click. If you want to view the wireframe of your UVs, click on this cog icon to toggle them on or off. You can also change the colour of the wireframe to aid with visibility. 
Just as with the aforementioned texturing workspace, the animation workspace has some custom UI panels for animating your scene. At the bottom is the timeline. This hasn't really changed from Toolbag 3 and works much like a timeline in other programs. Various tools for trimming clips, playback controls, and toggling auto keyframes are underneath the timeline itself. You can also set frames per second, length, and speed of clips with these settings. You can expand the keyframe editor up by double clicking the tab to see a more detailed keyframe timeline. Here you can view and modify curves for each element of an object that is able to be animated. For example, on this camera, I can view all of the curves for transforms, depth of field, and post effects. Keyframes will be represented by these small gray squares on the curves. Settings for keyframes and curve types can be found at the top here, and they can also be deleted individually or entirely nuked. Being able to customize viewports works beautifully for animation if you have a multiple monitor setup, as you can move timelines and keyframes to another screen, freeing up your screen space for your main viewport. Switching quickly to the classic workspace, I want to demonstrate how the splitting viewport functionality works in order to give artists even more flexibility for customizing their work area. In the top right corner, there is this icon with the two arrows. Clicking on it gives you the option to split horizontally or split vertically. This will initially create a duplicate of the same viewport, but you now have the option to change this viewport to anything that you need. For example, using this drop down menu, I can switch between cameras. I can change it to a canvas. I could also have it displaying only my wireframe, or I can use it to check various render passes. Additionally, if at any point you want to maximize your active viewport, hit shift and space on your keyboard. Using the same drop down menu, I can also set the quality of each viewport. Draft quality allows for quick and performant editing, whereas full quality is what you'll want when previewing your final shots. You can use quicker viewport quality modes such as draft, but still export renders with the full quality settings. Render passes are for displaying individual material values, such as your albedo or your roughness. Geometry information, such as the depth or normals. or the wireframe of your scene. It's worth noting as well that you can use the comma and period keys on your keyboard to cycle through the different modes. The tool settings window is another new addition to Toolbag 4 and is context dependent. If you have any of the transform gizmos selected, the tool settings will display settings specific to each one. Transform values can be entered by hand. Worldspace transforms can be toggled. And snap values can be designated. You can also snap transform gizmos in the viewport by holding down control as you move them. Alternatively, if I switch over to the texturing workspace, I can show off how the tool settings work with some of the texture specific features. With a paint layer selected, you can see that the toolbar at the top now has a bunch of different tools. Again, selecting each one will populate the tool settings. Various parameters for the brush tool can be changed via this window, as can gradient settings and selection settings. So that's a brief overview of the new workspaces and interface features in Toolbag 4. If you require a deeper look into any of the areas mentioned, head over to our website to watch our comprehensive introduction videos. Thanks for watching and have a great day.